Hello and welcome to this clip on how to do a more challenging Hess's Law question. It's important to, from the very start, focus on the skill that you'll need to apply throughout. Now you'll see how I'm specifically highlighting the things that you need to bear in mind when you're doing this type of question. So if at any point during the clip you feel you might need to stop, go back and have another think about it, please do so. And when the question comes up in a couple of seconds, it's worth actually pausing, copying it down, and then having a go at it before continuing. Okay, so there's four parts to this question. Um, I'm going to leave the bottom half of the screen for doing the actual question, and I'm going to leave the enthalpy values as provided at the top of the screen. So as we go through part A and work it out, what you might need to do is jot down what the answer was before we go on to the next screen. So we might have to pause the video at the, at the relevant time. I'll tell you, obviously, when, and then we can go on to the next part. So then we'll do part A, and then I'll clear that, leaving the data at the top, then do part B, etc. So let's have a look at what they want us to do. So if we look carefully, we can see that um, it's actually asking us to work out the standard enthalpy of formation of nitroglycerin. So what that means is we can put on the right hand side C3, H5, N3, O9 in liquid form and on the left hand side we can simply put the elements in their standard states that make up that molecule. So five hydrogens would be two and a half H2. Three nitrogen atoms would be one and a half N2. Making sure that everything is in state symbols, correct ones. And four and a half oxygens in molecular form would make nine oxygen atoms on the right. So if we look at the data that we do have, we have combustion data for carbon, for hydrogen, and for nitrogen. So along the bottom, we can put three CO2. We can put two and a half water. There. And it's given to us in gaseous form up here. So I'm putting it in gaseous form in my equation. And we need three NO2s. Again, in gaseous form. So this is our combustion products. So when carbon combusts, it's 3 times minus 394. Correct units. When hydrogen combusts, it's 2.5 times minus 242. And again, correct units. And when nitrogen combusts, it's one and a half times, I uh, beg your pardon, it's not one and a half, it's three times 34. Now we know that the enthalpy of combustion of nitroglycerin is minus 1540. So all we have to do now is work out how we're going to get from the start to the finish, which is the an indirect route signified by a purple arrow. So adding everything up, we have three lots of minus 394. We have two and a half times minus 242. I'm keeping the signs the same because I'm traveling, the purple line is traveling in the same direction as the downward pointing arrows. So the signs of everything stay the same plus three lots of 34. 
Now going around to the right hand side, the purple arrow is now pointing up, which is pointing the opposite direction to the minus 1540. So I change the minus 1540 into plus 1540. And adding all that up gives us minus 145 kilojoules per mole. That's our answer. So now I'm going to go on to the next part of the question. So I'm going to get rid of this Hess's Law cycle. So if you want to copy this down and have it in your notes, that's fine. Just pause the video and come back to it when you're ready. So this time we have a decomposition with some similarities to the, um, to the combustion that's provided in the data, but also some significant differences. <coughs> Now obviously because this comes after the question where you've calculated the enthalpy of formation of C3H5N3O9, and the way that it's laid out would suggest strongly that it's a formation data that you would have to have. So in other words, at the bottom we have three carbons, we have two and a half hydrogens, Uh, we have one and a half nitrogens and we'll have four and a half oxygens. So that can make nitroglycerine, which was minus 145 kilojoules mole. You've got three carbon dioxides, you've got two and a half waters, and you can disregard the nitrogen, the, the one and a half nitrogens, and the quarter O2, because elements don't have enthalpy of the formation. So what you're trying to do here is, like before, have an indirect route. So over here, where you have three carbon dioxides, it's three times minus three nine four kilojoules per mole. And over here you have two and a half times minus two four two kilojoules per mole to the minus one. So therefore, we take 145 as the positive value because you can see the red arrow going down from nitroglycerine goes against the direction of the black arrow, so you change the, the sign round and you're going with the other two arrows, so 3 times minus 394, so delta RH equals, and you add to that 2.5 times minus 242 equals minus 1642 kilojoules per mole. Okay, now the next one, in a second I'll just change the screen over. So here we have the remaining two parts of the question, and the first one gets you to think about why two possible reactions might occur. Now the previous decomposition um, involved the changing of C3H5N3O9 into its constituents, not its constituent elements, it didn't completely decompose into its elements, but it was similar to the composite, the combustion in the data you can see on the screen um, in one significant way. Um, it produced carbon, mon carbon dioxide and it produced water in the same quantities, but it didn't produce NO2. So thinking about this, I reckon the two possible best things to say would be either um, there's no oxygen needed, or possibly the activation energy is lower.
Now, why would the activation energy be lower? Because you don't have to break the OO bond. Now, this bit here, you wouldn't have to put in your answer to get the mark. I'm just including it so you can see why I'm suggesting why activation energy is lower. So in the last one, you have an alternative reaction. If you look here, you've also got water but being produced as a liquid, as opposed to water being produced as a gas. Now each of those two processes have a slightly different delta FH. So therefore, what we can say is that to go from H2O as a liquid to H2O as a gas means that the enthalpy change to get to H2O liquid is minus 286 and the enthalpy change to get to H2O as a gas is minus 242. So if you think about getting from one to the other it's 44, isn't it? So therefore you could say the enthalpy change for this process plus 44 kilojoules per mole. And it's positive due to energy needed to overcome hydrogen bonds. OK, so that brings us to the end of this question. Uh, apologies for the length of the video, but it was quite an involved question. It was worth going through. So thanks for listening, and I hope you find it of some use. OK, bye.